In 1991, the African Capacity Building Foundation was formed by African governments and multilateral partners to address the capacity of locals in achieving social and economic development. A quarter of a century later, the organization is counting some successes. It's helped governments, civic society organizations, the private sector, and higher education institutions in 45 countries. But it's now increasingly being called on to prioritize homegrown programs. Right now, I think the focus has changed. It is, as we've been hearing all of this morning, what is it that Africa can do for itself? And I think that business of depending either for technical assistance or for know-how or for innovation on the rest of the world is over. The African Union initiated Agenda 2063 is the main focus of ACBF interventions as it prepares to roll out its five-year plan. Africa has the ingredients to make it a success. Six of the, of the ten fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. Real income has risen by 30% in the last 10 years. This means Africa, therefore, is still a place to invest. And capacity development will remain key. And that's why the 25th anniversary is happening at an opportune time. Thus, as we celebrate and pay homage to the founding fathers of this organization, we need to take note that we have a lot to work, a lot of work ahead of us. Well, to get an idea of the challenges that face Africa, consider this. 35 out of every 1 million people in Africa are engineers. Compare that to Brazil, where the number is over 100, and the United States, where it's over 4,000. This continent is home to just 2% of the world's doctors, yet carries the bulk of the disease burden. More investment in education, in particular science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM subjects, will get Africa on track. They are real-life success stories from which inspiration can be drawn. Fifteen years ago when I started working with Ethiopia, there might have been one or two universities. Today, I would say there must be minimum 30, 40 universities. Every little village or town or you know, state has multiple institutions of higher learning. So, so we need that kind of an investment in our people, whether it's health, whether it's education. The celebrations are being held alongside a third review meeting, which is tracking progress of implementation on various projects. It will allow for remedial action to be taken where necessary. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.